Welcome to those who have joined us here in person and to you on Zoom and Facebook. We welcome you to our meditation. So please, we're just going to center ourselves, breathing in, breathing out, and just focus on God is the love that I am. And as your mind shifts somewhere, just bring it back. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am.
God is the love that I am. How wonderful it is to stop and just anchor ourselves in that truth. And for those of you who have just joined us during meditation, welcome. Welcome out there in internet land on Zoom and Facebook. Welcome those here. And uh, how about a chant? Want to chant? Want to chant, Jamie? You feel like chanting? Let's chant. All right, let's chant. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. Oh, yeah. pray. Right here, just stopping and taking this breath. We are in this place of God right here, right now. We are fully aware that there is a power, a presence, a life, a creator that is living in, through, and as each one of us. Right in this moment, our emotional, spiritual, physical, astral being is in perfect alignment, and we are open and available to hear a word tonight. We are open and available to hear a song tonight that strikes our hearts, that lifts our souls, that allows us to say, yes, God is, I am. God is joy, I am. God is abundance, I am. God is goodness, I am. Good and more good is mine because we are here tonight. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. And we take a moment, we bless our beloved Reverend Sydney, we know right in this moment, she is surrendering, she is opening, she is throwing her heart and soul wide open and saying, yes, I have a word that is going to lift and heal. Yes, I am bringing forth God's message that is absolutely going to transform us. We are on fire. We are ready to go. We are ready to lift. We are ready to change. Thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God. We bless Jamie and Sam as they bring us God's message and song. We bless our tech team as they keep the lights on so all can be heard and seen. We're so grateful something wonderful is happening something glorious is happening and we say yes 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 so I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest and so it is together we say amen and let's say the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, mm. bum, 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 mm. There's a song in this house I'm gonna find it. There's a song in this house I'm gonna sing. There's a song in this house I'm gonna share it with my friends. There's a song this house has got to bring. Oh, oh, oh. the hands are 
around the table All are welcome in this family I can feel a story wanting to be told I can hear the walls humming to me Lots of loving, lots of laughing, lots of living Lots of cars of lilies in my olfactory There's a song in this house, I'm gonna find it There's a song in this house, I'm gonna sing Song in this house, I'm gonna share it with my friends. There's a song this house has got to bring, and it's a song about love, 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 love. It's a story of love, love, love. It's a family of love, love, love. Oh, In that journal, and then the Bible, Hebrew hand reveals a mystery. Can't put children all embrace and come together in a circle of community. Lots of running, lots of writing, lots of praying, lots of peace, peace too. We're working here on our unity. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna find it. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna sing. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna share it with my friends. There's a song this house has got to bring, and it's a song about love, love, love. It's a story of love, love, love. It's a family of love, love, love. It's a song about love, love, love. Dream is never drawn, nothing here to steal. The door is always open for the seeker and the real. Beauty is a must, so everybody here abounds. An open heart, a secret trust, no safer place around. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna find it. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna sing. There's a song in this house, I'm gonna share it with my friends. There's a song this house has got to bring. Oh, Lord, there's a song in your house, you gotta find it. There's a song in your house, you gotta sing. There's a song in your house, you gotta share it with your friends. There's a song your house has got to bring. And it's a song about love, love, love. It's a song about love, love, love. It's a family of love, love, love. It's a story of love, love, love. And everybody said, la, 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. That is great. Is that a new one? No, it's been around for a little bit. Oh my gosh. Well, so so if we. <laughs> hmm. Fabulous. Thank you all. There's a song in the house. I'm going to find it. Well, that works so well with this talk. I'm going to keep this up here. It's dry tonight. All right. Hey. How is everyone? <laughs> if you ever had an experience where something caused you to change the way you thought about something, you thought something was the way it was supposed to be, you thought that your perception about something or someone was exactly who they are, who they were, and then you realized that what you thought you knew either was not the truth or just the tip of the iceberg. So, um, I was thinking about this today because this talk is all about willing to perceive and be believe. And I, I remember about 10 years ago um, having a conversation with our mail carrier at the time. Now, we were living um, outside of Portland, Oregon in kind of a rural area, Newburgh, Oregon, um, outside of that little town. And we were up in the hills and it was beautiful. Um, it, we would fall asleep sometimes to the sounds of owls calling to each other and every now and then there'd be a cougar in the, <laughs> down the street. Um, and, but we, we really loved where we were. Now, 
I remember having a conversation with our mail carrier, Sherry, and what I knew about Sherry was just based on my assumptions. So Sherry was this, um, I don't mean this in a pejorative way, I mean this in high praise. Musicians get this, she was a great broad. Okay, a great broad, you get this, right? I hope that at the end of my life, people refer to me as a great broad. So if you don't know what that, if, if you don't have context for this, think of Joan Blondell and some of her character roles. Think of B. Arthur, think of Betty White. Great broad, right? So I just assumed that Sherry was a great broad. You know, she would deliver our mail, she drove this sort of rickety old Jeep, and um, she'd bring it down this long driveway. We lived off of a gravel road, which is off of another gravel road. And she always was in some really comfortable old Levi's and a T-shirt that generally had like Journey or the Rolling Stones or, or a rock and roll band. So she was an old rock and roller and she was a great broad. And she always had a treat for the dog. So that, you know, right away, she's, she's over the top in my love for her. And we had this conversation one day and she said, well, I'm gonna be gone for a couple of weeks. I'm going on vacation. I said, wow, that's awesome. Where are you going? Tell me about that. And she said, well, we're going to the rally in Sturgis, South Dakota, the motorcycle rally. And I went, really? She said, yeah, but this is even better this time because usually I have to ride with my husband, but this time I'm riding on my own new Harley. And I remember telling my son about that, and he was about 13 at the time, and he said, Wow, that sure gives you a whole new understanding of the word grandma, doesn't it? Because she was a grandma, I knew that about her. And I thought, well, he's, he's a pretty smart kid. It's a complete new definition. And my perception had to shift because not only was she was a great broad, but she's a Harley riding great broad. Oh my God, it was so awesome. So we also laughed about it because neither one of us could see my mom on a motorcycle, that would, that would have never happened, but this was so cool to think about this woman who just had busted my perceptions totally. Wayne Dyer famously wrote, when, um, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. And so what I love about the science of mind is that's what we anchor this teaching on, that we want to proactively, intentionally, whenever we know that it's there, we change the way we think about things. And we also work at healing the stuff that has perhaps provided us with a perception that no longer works, and we, we intentionally work to change that. Our whole teaching is based on what the teacher Jesus said, right? It is done unto us as we believe. So that which we believe about life is going to show up. Our life will show up in that way because our perceptions are that fearer, fearer that fearer, interesting. Let's use the word filter instead there. We'll go back and edit that, okay? No problem there, thanks Doreen, appreciate it. Um, our perceptions are the filter through which we interpret everything. So if we've got a perception about someone just being this way and they show up this way, it's, it, it's hard to shift and understand. If we have a perception about life being one way, and we want it to be this way, we have to actually consciously work to think about life in a different way, to believe something different about that. I want you to remember that Jesus didn't say, it is done unto you as, as you wish. He didn't say it's done unto you as you hope for, and he didn't say it is done unto you as you make animal sacrifices about. He didn't say any of that. He, he called this the law of belief. He knew about the universality of law, and it is the law of belief. It is done unto us as we believe. So perception means a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something. It's a mental impression. Further, it's the process of interpreting something that we see or hear in our mind and use it later to judge and give a verdict on a situation, on a person, a group, or experience. Anybody here ever pronounced your verdict on something or someone? I know I do. It doesn't serve me, but I certainly do it. What's fascinating to me is that once we have a perception, we look for more evidence to justify and to prove that perception. You know, sociologists call this confirmation bias, right? So um, we have an idea and we believe 
that it's true. And so we'll look, whatever we see going on, we will, we will grab and interpret in such a way that it proves to us that that which we believe is so. Um, we engage in confirmation bias, both in healthy and unhealthy ways or positive and negative ways. So here's an example. If I have a perception that all people who don't look like me are bad, I will look for evidence and interpret evidence that proves that, all while disregarding the overwhelming evidence that shows my perception is biased. On the other hand, if I have a perception that says all people are part of God, and I affirm, as Raymond Charles Barker did, that all beings are divine in nature and limitless in their potential, then I most definitely will look for and find confirmation of that. So I get to choose. I get to choose. And that's part of this teaching, too. Ernest Holmes wrote this, Heaven is lost merely for the lack of a perception of harmony. Heaven is lost merely for the lack of perception of harmony. So as we look in the world and we believe that things are out of harmony or everything is, Michael Beckers would say, fluxed up because we're in flux, that, <laughs> that we're in a place of in great confusion and frustration, we will find evidence to justify that. And yet, think about it, heaven is lost merely for the lack of a perception of harmony. If we are willing to go beneath those appearances to not judge according to how it looks and to dig deeper and to find out what's beneath the great broad, that whole thing, if we're willing to look at, we're going to find some fascinating, wonderful, magnificent miracles. So heaven, 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 in case you wondered, by the way, when we talk about heaven here, it, we don't believe that we are waiting for like our, our good karma points, our good karma ticket that's going to whisk us off at the end of our lives and, and we're going to be up in the clouds where we suddenly, um, we are issued halos, wings, and perfect skin. Although I got to say that the, the perfect skin thing would work for me because I look at my, my neck sometimes and I think, man, what happened there? What? <laughs> I like the perfect And anybody else have an arm waddle? Anybody else have that? Whoa, what is that about? So one of my favorite Ernest Holmes quotes is one that I discovered when I was first studying to be a practitioner. And it popped up in my brain again this week because when I know I'm talking about something, I will chew on it, I will mull, mull it over, I will go to sleep with it, I will wake up with it, and, and it, it begins to really reveal stuff to me. And this quote came to me, the perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. The perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. When you and I allow just for the idea that healing is possible, that wholeness is there. The shift in our perception has the potential to literally change our world. It literally will change our world. Ernest also wrote, and you all know who Ernest Holmes is, was, founded this teaching, wrote our textbook, and is that, um, that light that has set many of us on our journey of, of reading the wisdom that he offered and also a whole bunch of others. And he wrote this, we are dealing with the same power that molds the planets and all that is upon them. And the limit of our ability to use this power is not in principle, but in our understanding of it. We cannot limit this power. However, our understanding, our perception of it will limit this power and its effect in our lives. The perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. And Ernest wrote this, whatever we think, act, believe in, feel, visualize, image, read, and talk about. In fact, all processes which affect or impre impress us at all are going into the subjective state of our thought, which is our individualized use of universal mind. So in other words, whatever we are thinking, imagining, feeling, and 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 chewing on and working with and, and projecting about and coloring and, and interrogating, all of that stuff that we are living with, 
that acts as, as a mold for universal mind, which is the presence and the power of spirit, which just absolutely is, is like a short order cook waiting for us to give it form, to give it direction. And the thing is, whether that thing that we are focused on and obsessing about is something really wonderful, like radiant health, radiant energy, successful lives, or it's, God, I can't believe how bad this thing is or how bad that person is or whatever they did to me. Whatever it is, the presence, like a short order chef, says, got it, okay, yes, order in, got it. So we have to choose. We have to choose. Whatever goes into the subjective state of our thought tends to return again as some condition. So we and we alone control our destiny. Now, it's good news, bad news, right? And I know some of you are thinking, uh, but what about Hitler? What about earthquakes? What about pandemics? Our most powerful tool in all that happens in this life is our response to what happens. Our response. We have the power to choose. And the choice that we have is, do we respond or do we react? Now, they're two very different things. Reaction, for me, is a visceral emotional thing where I, I react from, oh, no, that's not right, that can't be right, and I feel everything tightening up. Now, response opens me up, and there's room for flow. There's room for information. Our reactions are directly tied to conditions and our feelings, and subsequently, our beliefs to those experiences, those conditions. Reacting to something that happens is, be it Hitler, an earthquake, or a pandemic, is normal, but staying triggered is a choice. Staying triggered is a habit. Staying triggered might be comfortable and familiar, but boy, does it hurt. Boy, does it hurt. And it doesn't move us into a place of not hurting, right? It doesn't make us feel better. It doesn't make us feel better. React or respond, what's the choice? I choose response because that's where all the power is found. That's where my power is found. And I want to read that again. We are dealing with the same power that molds the planets and all that is upon them. And the limit of our ability to use this power is not in principle, but our under understanding of it. So when we got into this pandemic thing two years ago, what became very clear for me uh, when, uh, that we were going to be, when we found out that we were going to be in this prolonged state of dis-ease and quarantine, I, I reacted like everybody else did. What the, what? You know, I had shock, anger, fear, denial, more fear, more anger, more denial. And finally, after I got exhausted, and truly exhausted. I mean, anybody else get exhausted considering all of that? I started to look and remember that I had a power and an ability to respond. So, in other words, after honoring that human reaction and that human experience, my feelings, I turned within and began to think from a, dimmer, a, a deeper place of wisdom and possibility. I began to think from source because I remembered, I remembered, I remembered, I remembered, I get to choose. I get to choose. I'm not a victim in this. I am not powerless in my choice. I stopped arguing and trying to rearrange the, the deck chairs on this Titanic of COVID-19, and I started agreeing with God and all that God is. And I asked questions. And the questions I began to ask were, where is my focus? Is it on the conditions and the problem, or am I willing to focus on God? Am I shadow boxing with my fear or am I willing, willing to perceive wholeness? The perception of wholeness is, is the consciousness of healing. In other words, the moment we begin to see it or are willing to see it, we have moved into that mind, that miracle mindedness, that consciousness of knowing that there is healing, that health is present, that healing is present, that wholeness is already there, that actually there's nothing to heal 
I've got a practitioner student sitting out here, so I have to remind her of that. There's nothing to heal. There is only this higher truth that we reveal that the wholeness is there. How do we want to respond? You want to respond from a perception of wholeness and a perception of holy truth? Are we going to react from a commitment to our problems? And believe me, I have had some good, strong commitment to my problems. I'm a good committer. I'm a really good committer. I can commit to my fears. I can commit to my opinions and my judgments. And bam, 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 the yammering that goes on in my brain, I want to leave, but it's still my brain. And it's just ridiculous because it's a commitment to limitation. It's a commitment to less than what I am. It's a commitment to who I used to think I was, but forgot that I moved from that into the truth that I am infinite and I am divine and I am sacred and holy. Such is the power of right thinking that it cancels and erases everything unlike itself. Whoa, now ain't that good news? It cancels and erases everything unlike itself. It is like the sun, this is Ernest Holmes. It is like the sunlight of eternal truth bursting through the clouds of obscurity and bathing all life in a celestial glory. Oh, man. I, didn't, I bet you didn't know he was quite the poet. It is the absolute with which we are dealing and nothing less. I'm suddenly thinking of um, years ago when somebody put music behind the poem Desiderata. You are, let's see, no less than the, the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. You are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. That is what we are talking about, the absolute nothing less. So with that in mind, I want to guide you through a process to bring you to a closer, a closer place of, of, uh, of knowing a perception of wholeness and thereby move into a consciousness of healing. You know, wholeness isn't just health, by the way. When the wholeness of God is active, which it always is, it's just up to our perception to recognize, acknowledge, and to dive into that, that wholeness will express as relationship, healthy, loving relationship, healthy body, beautiful career, prosperity. Wholeness can express as, as great artistry. Wholeness can, can express in so many ways because that's the nature of God. The quality of God that we are looking at, wholeness, is about fulfillment. It's about joy. It's about bliss. Those are all the qualities of God. And if God is all there is, which I know that to be true, and I believe that to be true, then I am part, then, then what is true about God is true about me, is true about you and you and you, not you, but everybody else in here. <laughs> Just kidding. I've known Jamie for 25 years, 20 years. Yikes. But it is true about all of us. And we can't deny it, even if we want to. So we need to stop fighting that wholeness that is forever seeking to come through and to express and to celebrate as us. So if you are willing to just take a breath and relax into your seats, and Sam, I didn't even prepare you for this, but if you feel like just being, you know, doing some air pudding over there, <laughs> some new age chords, go from the one to the six minor, one to the, you know, just over and over. <laughs> okay, so relax, take a breath, let it out. Think of someone out in the world who has what you want. Someone out there that you don't know, but you may have read about or heard about, alive or dead, who has or has done what you want. Could be money, fame, energy, inspiration, great talent, whatever it is, I want you to just regard that, that gift, and that person with love and appreciation for being there and giving that gift and for showing that it's possible. Don't think of them from a place of envy or judgment, or I could never do that. But instead, just regard them with the joy that they are 
perhaps doing what they came here to do. How glorious that is. How wonderful that is. Notice how it feels to regard their enjoyment and to enjoy what they do. Notice how their talent or success is perhaps even a way for them to help others and to lift this world. And even in this moment, as we think about it, it's lifting our world. The wholeness of life, of life itself, is expressing through that person and the activity of their talent, of their wholeness. They are living in a perception and a belief of yes. And they are the consciousness of yes. Now think of someone closer, someone in your life, someone you know, maybe a family member or friend or someone you encounter from time to time who has what you want, who's living a life that you would like to live. Maybe they have a life of great prosperity, energy, inspiration, talent, fame, whatever it is. They have a life of freedom. Think of that person lovingly, appreciatively, because they have brought a gift, and they're giving that gift. And you have been exposed to it. You have been, ah, you have gotten to see that and to perceive it. You don't have to know this person well, but you appreciate their joy and their open-heartedness, their success. Maybe it's Jamie over here and the way he opens your heart. Maybe it's Sam and the way he evokes great emotion and delight with his skill, with his talent. Maybe it's someone you know who is an artist or a great accountant or an awesome attorney. They do exist, by the way. Maybe it's someone who prays amazingly, like this. Invite yourself to just be in the delight of knowing that they are doing their lives in a way that is bringing joy to themselves and to others. Isn't it wonderful to celebrate that with them? The wholeness of life is expressing through that person in the activity of their talent. They are living in a perception of yes, and they are the consciousness of yes. Yes, yes, yes. And now finally, touch your own heart and think about that thing or experience that you want. Has it seemed like it's impossible? Like it can't be done? Is there perhaps a perception of no? Is there a perception of no in your heart about that thing or that experience? Has there been a belief that life withholds from you, does for everybody else, but not for you? Now surround that idea, that dream of yours in the yes that you've already connected with. You have celebrated a yes that you've perceived in other people. Bring that feeling of the yes and the joy of living life in full expression of talent, purpose, dreams, whatever it is, into that same field of yes, yes. You've created that perception of yes already. It is possible. You've recognized it. We have recognized it. We have seen it. We have known it. We have, we have absolutely felt it. Others have done this. Others have expressed this. The path is clear. So I invite you to say this silently to yourselves. I stand on the shoulders of those who have come before me. I stand on the shoulders of those who have come before me. Their yes is my yes. I open myself now to full availability and perception. I open to belief. The wholeness of life is expressing through me in the activity of my talent, of my passion, of my purpose. I am right now living in a perception of yes, and I am the consciousness of yes.
Rest in this energy for just a moment more. And when you're ready, open your eyes. There is this consciousness on our planet of, but not for me. For everybody else and not for me. Um, I was thinking about this today. They're singing songs of love, but not for me. What if, <laughs> what if it were they're singing songs of love and they're for me? They're for me. And I don't remember the rest of the words. I can play it, but I don't remember the lyrics. But it's for me. Life is for me. Life is here for me. Life is here for you. God does not have the time, interest, energy, or personality, by the way, to decide to discriminate against one person and not another. It just does not interest God. You know, you've heard Dr. Mark say many, many times, God doesn't love you because of who you are, but you are because God loves you. You are fully necessary to this expression of the divine because without it, God isn't being expressed. God has shown up as me in this really brilliantly orange scarf today and in you in that beautiful jacket and in you and you and you and yes you all of us are God inside this wonderful wonderful as one of my teachers would say meat suit you know we are in this yet this is a a spiritual universe and it works according to spiritual law and each one of us is a spiritual being we all hear as that. So this perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. You expressing in power, creativity, commitment, energy, and purpose are God's demonstration of wholeness, necessary to the expression of God. This is how God enjoys itself. God needs to have a party, not just like this, mm, but not for me. That's not God. Wholeness means the qualities of God. It may look like artistry to you. It may look like health to someone else. It may look like a fabulous and wonderful relationship to someone else after that. Whatever the quality is, you have already in this moment accessed it. You have done actually what we call a mental equivalent of that feeling. You have done it. It is there. It is possible. It is alive. It is actual. Your perception of someone else's wholeness has brought you into the feeling into the field of a consciousness of healing. So whatever it is, if you are willing to take those steps to perceive wholeness, to remember wholeness, if only just for a moment, for a little bit, you will have opened up that, mm, as Rumi said, as Leonard Cohen said, this is where the light gets in. Just needs a little bit, just needs a little opening, just crack it open a little bit, and spirit goes, Oh, finally, I can get in there and I can do my work. And that's when we begin to thrive. All things are possible to them that love, right? So go forth and love. Let the wholeness of God be the healing consciousness of love within and as you. You deserve it. You are worthy. And this world is waiting for you to come true. And so it is. Let's do a really quick prayer and anchor this, shall we? All right. I have to get my notes out sometimes. All right, so. <sighs> I know for each of us, as we live in this infinite field of yes, that we have truly taken this information in, this wisdom in, and it has resonated in our hearts and our bodies and our minds and our souls, the physical body, the emotional body, the spiritual body, the etheric body, all of it is absolutely embracing and celebrating and uniting and putting all of this together and assimilating it in such a way that we are the wholeness of God in brilliant, dazzling, radiant expression. So wherever the need appears to be, there is no need. There is just the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of love. There is just the fulfillment of God's wholeness. Because that is the way love works. That is the way God works. That is the way spirit works. By the way, that is how you and I have been created to work. So we say yes to that now, knowing that we are guarded guided, guarded, and, and open-hearted on every level. 
We bless this experience. We bless this church. We bless all churches, mosques, ashrams, temples, cathedrals, whatever the, the, the place of worship. We bless all paths to God. And I am certain that we are blessed by being together. We are a blessing in the world. And all that we do, all that we are, lifts us up, and it is good. And I know it is so. And I say, and so it is. And I invite you to say with me, amen. And then to say, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Hit it. Here we go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I am only here for God. One more time. Yes, I'm only here for God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? We all need to wake up our hands. Yay! <laughs> all right. Would you please um, take your offering, hold it in your hand, or hold the idea in your hand, and place it to your heart, please. And say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Aha, yay. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone. We have some announcements. So, even if you're not here, you can still give. You can still tithe. Isn't that cool? So, here's the ways you can do it. You can call the office, 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. And those are all the ways. And there's more, I'm sure. You can give right here. You can give to me. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, we have prayer with the practitioner after service. If you're on Facebook, you go over to Zoom, and you can have a one-minute miracle with a practitioner. You don't want to miss that opportunity to pray. Next week, you know, Reverend Sydney wasn't supposed to be here, but she is. But I'll be speaking. So <laughs> next week, I'll be talking about a tale of two prayers. You, prayer is always answered. You don't get what you pray for. You get what you pray from. So we'll be talking about that. And um, youth church is open. Please bring your kids, 9.45 a.m. service. We have a wonderful program for them, and we'd love to see them here. And we have a great opportunity for you guys to become members of the church through Dr. Mark's Quick Start class. Three Sundays, Zoom only, starting this Sunday, 12 to 1.30. It's an introduction and a background to Ernest Holmes and the principles and teachings that we practice here at the church. And it makes you a member of the church. Don't you want to do that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, we also have Circle of Healing on Zoom this Sunday also, 1 o'clock. Mary Catherine O'Hart, she will guide you through your chakras in a loving and healing experience. It's on Zoom. More information. North Hollywood Church, religiousscience.org. And this Sunday also, we're feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry will be feeding them. They do it the third Sunday every month. So please support this ministry. It's very important. Go to our website site, and you can find out how to volunteer and give donations. So yay, virtual patio, before and after. Wednesday and Sunday services is a great opportunity to commune with your spiritual community. We've got meditation every morning, 8 a.m., Monday through Saturday. And for anything you need to know, any questions about anything, any questions about life, go to North Hollywood Church of Religious Science.org. There you have it. Love y'all. Sydney, did you have something to say? I do. Okay, I do. cool. Well, I always have something to say. You know that. Um, so in a few weeks, on the 30th, which is a Sunday, we are doing something unprecedented and wonderful and magical and fabulous here. We are going to be celebrating the birthday of Ernest Holmes, our dean and founder, as Reverend Ann always used to say. And, and so we, but it's not just that, it's, we're going, well, oh man, we are so far past just the cake. And there will be cake, somebody tell Joanne, there will be cake that we are going to have a very special service with some surprise special guests. You do not want to miss this. That service starts promptly at 9.45. That's January 30th. That's Sunday. Sunday. And the band is going to be here that day. Yes. And my husband is going to be playing with them that day. Yes. I mean, that's worth coming for. And um, let's see, what else do I want to say about any? Did I forget anything? No, I, well, I've... No, I'm not going to say it because there's things we don't want to give away. Yet. That's true. We don't want to give anything away, but yeah. there will be cake. Yeah. And so much more. Yeah. Just so much more. All right. What's that? Let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. Oh, we... we, we that ended well for her. We, we would like you to eat cake. <laughs> All right. So let's just prepare to move out into the world. What a wonderful thing it has been to know that we are here, that we are loved, and that we are the transformation in action of love that we are the power of love we are the joy of love we are the wisdom of god in brilliant radiant dazzling fabulous expression and we choose to say yes to it in every area of our lives and as we go out into the world this day i know that we create ripples and the life is absolutely a celebration of light of wholeness of the consciousness of healing and that all of it is good because right where we are, God is, and that is good. So we say, and so it is, and I know it is so, and together we say, amen. Yeah, yeah baby. All right. One last time, everyone. Yep. Take us home, Jamie. Bless it all.
you some blessings, y'all.